I would just like to suggest that I've been in this field for many years and I've encountered many different people working with many different frequencies which they have felt were magic frequencies. There are indeed important frequencies that have been discovered. There are indeed important frequencies that will be discovered. But there is another aspect besides the pure aspect of frequencies which we'll be discussing later. And it is the concept of intent. And indeed, I'll tell you another very, very quick story. Some years ago, I was reading a book called Creative Visualization and Multidimensional Consciousness, written by a man called Lama Govinda, and it's a wonderful book about the Om Mani Padme Hum chant and many other sacred mantric forms. There was a small little footnote, a little asterisk in the book, and it said, there is no correlation between brainwave activity and states of consciousness. And I looked at that. There is no correlation between brainwave activity and states of consciousness. And all of a sudden I got it. And I said, yes, this is true, because you know, if there were a one-to-one -one relationship between the way the brain is oscillating and vibrating, and our states of consciousness, we will all be at least semi-enlightened, because television puts you into an alpha state. Therefore, it is not only at what rate or oscillation the brain is working, but what you are doing with your consciousness while this is occurring. Very important, what is your intention during this frequency shift? More on this in a few minutes. Theta is a wonderful frequency for deep meditation, shamanic work, channeling, very, very powerful meditation, very, very powerful healing. And if I were to attempt to demonstrate via my speech and my field, Theta, I would have to really slow down my talking and just tell you that it's really an extraordinary and peaceful place to be. Theta is wonderful and I know that you will be able to resonate and entrain the Theta brainwave activity very, very soon if you're not doing it now. And now I'll bring us back up to a bit of alpha so I can continue talking to you about brainwave activity without any of us, well, shall we say, falling too deeply into a state of deep relaxation. The last brainwave delineation, brainwave state, if you like, that I would like to talk to you about is called delta. It's from about a half a psychosecond to around four cycles a second. Now, I've been in this field for a long time, and back in the mid-80s, I was writing a scientific paper on the ability of sound to entrain and shift consciousness and affect brain waves. And so I was therefore doing a fair amount of investigation into brainwave activity, and when I looked up delta, it was either defined as a state where people were comatose in a coma or in such a deep state of sleep that you'd have to pour water on them in order to wake them up. Delta was definitely not a coherent conscious state. Then, not very long ago, within this last decade, and actually probably somewhere in the mid-90s, a good friend of mine who was a medical doctor was doing research and he found that number one, many shaman, many deep healers, many what they call trance channels, would display brainwave frequencies of one cycle a second as well as the person that they were dealing with. If it was a healer and they had their hands, for example, on uh, a patient or a client, the brainwave activity of the patient or client would also be one cycle a second. 
And they were conscious. They were not only conscious, they would be talking. They perhaps might be a bit blissed out. They would have their hands out and they would be talking about, yes, I feel the energy of the universe coming through my hands. And I know that I am in divine order with all that is. That sort of thing. It would be even slower and more relaxed than Theta. But they were still conscious, which was really unheard of 10, 15 years ago. Now this deep state of Delta, a lot of very, very powerful shamanic work, healing work, but I'd also like to suggest that there is a difference between our ability to what I call encoding greater frequencies of light and love into our physical body, into our theory field, down to a cellular level, encoding higher frequencies of light and love and shifting our vibrational field that way, and making the assumption that our nervous system is to be raised up, because quite the contrary is true. In order to access higher levels of light and love, in order to access higher frequency levels and encode them into ourselves, it's necessary to slow down. In fact, my friend who had done these experiments with people found that they were oscillating, their brain waves were oscillating first at one cycle a second, and then there was a spike at a point called CZ over here. And this point registered 128 cycles a second, which fell within the audible range and had never been measured before. It is almost as though one were going very slowly on a diving board, hitting the diving board, and then springing up to a higher harmonic, a higher level of consciousness. So in order to speed up our vibrational rate, it's necessary first to slow down.